I made it. I, what is it, fall back and spring forward? I sprung forward. <laughs> I know, I'm, I'm waiting, I'm waiting for people to, to come on in. Well, good morning. It's good to see you on this bright, crisp morning. <laughs> uh, it's so good to be here. So welcome to Clough United Methodist Church. We're glad to have you here in worship this morning, where you are invited to come connect, grow, and serve your roadmap to meaningful purpose. And to remind you that you are welcome here, no matter what you have, no matter where, okay. <laughs> Let's start again. No matter where you have come from and no matter where you are going, no matter what you believe or doubt, no matter what you have or don't have, and no matter whom you love, all of who you are is welcome to this time of worship by God who loves you and knows you by name wants a personal relationship with you. Thanks be to God. Amen? Amen. 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 And we are still in Lent, hallelujah, which is a time of self-examination and reflection. And so I am so happy we're doing this church-wide study on God in the Bible, and Sunday school class is rocking with that. Uh, we have um, a small group on Wednesday at 10 o'clock at Cherry Grove, where you're welcome to come if you miss Sunday school. And on Wednesday at 10, you could come over to Cherry Grove or at 6.30 here at Clough. I'll be here whether anybody shows up or not, and I've only had one person show up so far at 6.30, so I'm just saying, right? I know there's some folks that are working, so I'm just saying I will be here uh, if you uh, care to uh, have a small group on Wednesday at 6.30. So there's a few other announcements. I see some good stuff. Just a reminder about the chant. Uh, Shonda Pierce live. If you're interested, Ellie Leffick is her contact person. There's a flyer in your bulletin, and I think if we have enough people, we can get a group rate. So if you're interested, please let her know. Um, and then Easter flowers. Uh, we're just doing lilies, and they're $13 each. So if you want to order uh, lilies, you need to do that. Sunday, the 26th is the last day to do uh, the order. And then I see board games and baguettes, right, is what I'm saying. And that is going to be on the 25th of March from 3 to 4.30. And it's to come and play some board games and enjoy charcuterie. That's what I, I did. I pronounce it right. So <laughs> it's an indoor board game event. And then I understand Leah is asking, so if we have some board games at, at our homes that we could bring, right, do so. And so I do have some, and I know that some of us have some that we've been holding on to. So, you know, just bring them, <laughs> donate them, all right, so we can have some fun. All right. Any other announcements? Yes, we want to say congratulations to our Leah, right? Yes, <laughs> Leah Hill. Yes, she rocked that test score, and um, she is uh, certified now. Yes, oh my goodness, that is just excellent. So, any other announcements to come before the congregation before we begin our worship experience? Okay, hearing none, let us prepare our hearts for worship as we hear these centering words. God is like a nursing mother. God loves and thinks about God's children just as a mother does. God remembers us and will never forget us. So please stand as we begin our worship in praise and prayer. My Savior, Redeemer, lifted me from the miry clay. Almighty, forever, 
I will never be the same Cause you came near From the everlasting To the world we knew The Father is only Son And you lived And you died And you rose again How high And you opened the way For the world to live again Lifted me from the miry clay, Almighty, forever. I will never be the same, cause you came near from the everlasting to the world we live. The Father is only. God, our hearts are full of praise for all of the glorious things you have given to us. And we look upon your creation, we realize that it reflects your glory. And when we experience the gift of a parent's love, we are reminded of your tender love for us. And when we worship in the great congregation of all who name you as Lord, we are blessed to be counted among your children. Hear our prayer of joy and thanksgiving this day and sustain us in, us in grateful hearts that we might praise you eternally. Through Jesus, for Christ our Lord, amen, amen. and amen. You may be seated as we have a moment with children. All right, good. We have... A bunch. Um, 
Courtney was on for the day, but Courtney is on the road right now trying to get here. We may want to say a prayer for all the other drivers um, as she's trying to, to get here. Apparently, Avery wasn't ready to go, so they're running behind today. Um, so today's topic is about God being nurturing like a parent and like a mother. Uh, can you guys give me any examples of some things your mothers do that would be nurturing and loving and good for you? <laughs> now, I know a couple, now, Rory's sitting here thinking all the things dad does for her. She's trying to think of something for mom. Hi, Rory, can you think of something that your, your mom does for you? She gives me hugs. She gives you hugs. Good one. Have you eaten this week, Rory? <laughs> Mom may have had something to do with you eating this week, perhaps. No? Haven't eaten all week. <laughs> Alright, Isaiah, what about you? What what's your mom do for you? Makes you clean your room. Sometimes mothers have to buy good stuff at the store. She feeds you. A new waffle maker. Because I'm assuming you like waffles. Yeah. <laughs> A waffle guy. <laughs> All right. What about you guys? What? Things that your your mother does for you. Cooks. Cooks for you. Laundry. Do your your moms work a lot that apparently you guys don't notice <laughs> because yeah I I see you and you know you clean clothes and you look to be well fed. Uh, Tells me I love you. Does your mom ever say I love you? Does your mom give you hugs? Does mom uh, <laughs> does mom just make sure you're okay and check in on you to make sure everything's good? Now let me ask you another question. Does your mom ever tell you no? <laughs> All the time. And why? Why in the world would your mother tell you? <laughs> Is, and then the question would be, you think of the times your mom's telling you, no, you shouldn't do something or don't do that. Is that loving and nurturing also? Does your mom keep you from doing things that hurt yourself or cause yourself cause you problems? Yes, they do. We try. <laughs> so I'm thinking that, you know, when moms tell us no, that's that's important too. Does God tell us no not to do certain things? Yeah. Yeah. He does, and he tells us not to do certain things because those things cause us problems and make life more difficult for us. So when your parents are telling you no, it's because they love you and care for you and want you to, do, to be fine, and, work, and it will be better for you to not do those things. I know that's sometimes hard to hear, but uh, when, parent, when people have asked me, because my girls, have, you know, despite Avery being late today and causing her mom not to be here, uh, my girls have turned out pretty well, and sometimes people ask me, what have you done? I said, well, bring them up in a good, loving church and learn to tell them no and mean it. And those are big things because learning to say no is important um, to do things. All right, so let's take a moment to pray. Lord, we ask you to watch over these children. We ask you to help them to understand how loving and nurturing you are and how loving and nurturing their parents, their parents are because they follow you. And we ask that they understand that and appreciate it as they grow up and that you uh, have your loving arms around them all day, every day. Amen.
Uh, you guys can go to Children's Church. <laughs> Let us prepare to hear the word from God. Holy God, author of the word made flesh, to whom belongs both the first word and the last, open us to your spirit that as scripture is spoken and your word proclaimed, we may be comforted, convinced, and changed to the glory of Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray. Amen. Scripture today is from Isaiah 49, 13 through 16 from the Inclusive Bible. Shout for joy, you heavens. Exalt, you earth. You mountains, break into happy cries. For Yahweh consoles the people and takes pity on those who are afflicted. But Zion said, Yahweh has abandoned me. Adonai has forgotten me. Does a woman forget her own baby at the breast or fail to cherish the child of her womb? Yet, even if these forget, I will never forget you. Look and see, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. Your walls are forever before me. And then we find in Isaiah 66, 7 through 13 in the New Revised Standard Version. Before she was a labor, she gave birth. Before her pain came upon her, she delivered a son. Who has heard of such a thing? Who has seen such things? Shall a land be born in one day? Shall a nation be delivered in one moment? Yet as soon as Zion was in labor, she delivered her children. Shall I open the womb and not deliver, says the Lord? Shall I, the one who delivers, shut the womb, says the, your God? Rejoice with Jerusalem and be glad for her. All you who love her, rejoice with her in joy. All you who mourn over her, that you may nurse and be satisfied from her consoling breast, that you may drink deeply with delight from her glorious bosom. For thus says the Lord, I will extend prosperity to her like a river and the wealth of the nations like an overflowing stream, and you shall nurse and be carried on her arm and bounced on her knees. As a mother comforts her child, so I will comfort you. You shall be comforted in Jerusalem. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Our song of response, Good, Good Father. stories of what they think you're like but I heard the tender whisper of love in the dead of night you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never alone you're a good good father Do I? 
church say amen so sermon this morning is our God who loves nurtures and parents so the image of God as father as we've just sung is familiar in Hebrew and Christian scriptures and also present in the Bible is the image of God as mother God is like a nursing mother and just as a mother cannot forget her child, so also God remembers us. And even if a mother might forget, God will not. The image suggests God's devotion to humankind. God loves and thinks about God's children just as a mother does. Well, we have explored the metaphors of God in this sermon series, this Bible study, that our biblical writers have used to describe God. God relates to human like a shepherd does to his charge of sheep or, or goats. And God relates to humans as the vine grower or even the vine that prunes that, that which does not bear fruit. And God is like the midwives that manage childbirth in the nitty-gritty of labor and delivery. And last week, we are reminded uh, that God created divine wisdom, who was the co-creator uh, of all that was ever created and who was at the beginning of the ordering of the world and all that's in it. And what the prophets and writers of the biblical narrative witness to us is the many and varied ways that God interacts with humans and the many and different ways that God reveals God's self to us. So our text for today reveals that our God loves us and reveals God's nature as a loving, protective parent, especially that of a mother. Now the passages, the Isaiah passages that were read today come from 2nd Isaiah, 
which was written around 540 BC, about 45 years after the destruction of Judah and Jerusalem by the Babylonian Empire and the subsequent deportation of many of, Isra many of the Israelites to Babylon. And this deported community doubted its status as God's chosen people and even doubted the sovereignty of God. I mean, the prophets sought to assure the exiles that the Lord still had compassion for them and that the Lord, despite the triumph of, the Babylon, of uh, Babylon, is still the Lord of the heavens and over history. I mean, so think about it. I mean, so, it, you know, the destruction and here over a generation reaching into a next generation is under captivity. And Babylon and are saying, well, I thought we were the favored ones, right? So why are we here, right? Um, and so the writer asks, will, will a nursing mother ever forget her child? Well, you have to remember, like, that they didn't have... Uh, uh, bottles to put the milk in, right? And so women were the main caregivers of infants and, and, and nurturing and feeding them up to about the age of three. They didn't wean the kids until about the age of three. And so God said, can a nursing mother forget her child? He said, and even if she does, God assures the Israelites that they will never be forgotten. And as we know, they eventually come out of captivity and go back and rebuild uh, Jerusalem and the temple. But can we relate? Are there times when we are in Babylon, <laughs> abandoned and, and seemingly adrift and, and suffering, and we ask, where is God? <laughs> does not God hear our pleas? Does, does not God feel our pain? And like Mary and Martha, we assert that, that had God been present and, and, and had God been the loving God that God is supposed to be, our loved one would not have died. Can we relate? Now, mothers are not the only parent, right? And while the illustration of a doting mother is present in Scripture, we can all share stories of mothers and fathers whose love covers all things that reflect justice and love. In my own life, it was my Nana that I could relate to, right? It was my Nana that I could, even then I did wrong, could do no wrong. Can anybody, can anybody relate, right? Um, <clears throat> but I found this illustration, um, and it begins this way. At, at dinner one evening, Tommy misbehaved. My, my. His father was always a strict disciplinarian and reprimanded him, saying, Now, Tommy, if you do not behave, you will be sent to your room. But Tommy didn't listen. Orders from the room, order to the room, he heard his father's last words, and there will be no food for you tonight. So later in bed, Tommy's thoughts of his behavior began to bother him. He was hungry. <laughs> And he couldn't remember ever having felt more alone and alienated. And he began to cry. And then he heard a noise on the stairs. And then footsteps came closer to his room, and his door opened, and his father came in. Closing the door, he came over to Tommy's bed and said, I love you, son, and I've come to spend the night with you. So yes, God is like a father. We do not suffer alone, even if we are disobedient. And see, the reason why the Israelites were in Babylon is because of their disobedience. Right? They brought it upon themselves. Had they been obedient, they would not have suffered this tragedy. And that's what God is saying. Hey, I haven't forgotten you. I love you still. Our God who loves us is given maternal imagery in the text from Isaiah also. Jerusalem is in pain because of the belief that God has abandoned her, but God will never abandon us. God is with us always in every situation. 
Now, when the will of Henry J. Heinz, you know, the wealthy distributor of the famous 57 varieties, when his will was read, it, it, can, it was found to contain the following confession. Looking forward to the time when my earthly career will end, I desire to set forth at the very beginning of this will as the most important item in it, a confession of my faith in Jesus Christ as my savior. And I also desire to bear witness to this fact that throughout my life in which there were unusual joys and sorrows, I have been wonderfully sustained by my faith in God through Jesus Christ. But this legacy was left me by my consecrated mother, a woman of strong faith. And to it, I attribute any success I have attained. Well, William and make peace, Thackeray said, mother is the name of God in the lips of hearts and of little children. And an ancient Jewish proverb said, God could not be everywhere, therefore God made mothers. But I, as I was looking at various illustrations to help me point out the, the theme of this, message there was there was one that I thought was um, was interesting so there was a mother that went to the hospital to, to give birth and so uh, the son reported that um, that his father and his twin sisters and he were home alone right you get it right because mother wasn't there so uh, <clears throat> today we, we recognize and celebrate the images of God as parent, particularly as a mother who never forgets us. Yet we know that everyone does not have the same experience of nurturing parents. And we know that there are those who cannot share the pro positive experience of protection and, and justice and affirmation coming from their parents. I mean, we have, you know, daily, we witness, right, the abuse of children in the United States, right? We witness the abandonment of children in the United States. Not, we're not even gonna talk about the world, all right? So we know that everybody doesn't have the perfect parents, right? Well, not that parents are perfect anyway, but nevertheless, everyone doesn't have a positive experience of our parents. But our God offers us the opportunity to transplant our lived experiences on earth because they are not the way of our Lord, our Savior, our Redeemer, or how, that, uh, how God interacts with us. Our God offers unconditional love and nurturing companionship to us who are created in God's likeness. And so, as we uh, go through this um, study of the names of God and the images of God and the metaphors of God in the Bible, you know, we're to be open uh, to seeing God in all facets uh, of God's own being and, react and relationship with us. And so today, you are encouraged to reflect and share Share a moment when the image of God as a nurturing parent in your lives brought comfort and a sense of belonging to you. Amen. We're going to have a song of response, Great Are You, Lord. But we're also going to have a time, a silent reflection, and we're going to have a prayer, which is a word of comfort and litany. And so I do want you to want us to take the time to reflect on God being our parent. God being the loving mother and the loving father. You give life. You are loved.
reflect on all that's gone before us. Join me in words of comfort, litany. Like a mother, God hears us and is quick to help us. And when we are afraid and lonely, the Lord tells us, I have called you by name and you are mine. Blessed, Blessed be your, your name, name divine, divine king. And when we are grieving, God tells us, as a mother comforts her child, so I'll comfort you, and you will be comforted. Blessed be your name, divine parent. And when we are anxious, God reminds us, calm and quiet your soul like a weaned child with his mother. Blessed be your name, divine. And when we are discouraged, God tells us, you shall nurse, you shall be carried upon my hip 
and bounced upon my knees. Blessed Blessed be be your your name, name, divine divine parent. parent. And when we are up against giants, Jesus tells us, How often I have wanted to gather you the way a mother hen gathers her chicks under her wings. Blessed be your name, divine. And when we mess up and are afraid there is no place at the table for us, we hear, can a mother forget the baby at her breast and have no compassion on the child she has born? Though she may forget, I will not forget you. See, I have tattooed you on the palms of my hand. Blessed be your name, mother and father of us all, who always comforts, loves, nurtures, and cares for us. Amen. Like a mother, God hears us and is quick to help us. When we are afraid and lonely, The Lord tells us, I have called you by name, and you are mine. Blessed be your name, divine parent. We'll have the call to confession. We cannot come before God unless we are first honest with ourselves about who we are, about the mistakes we make, and about how well or how poorly we care for others. In this spirit, let us offer our prayers to God. Almighty God, you have freed us from slavery to sin. You have led us through the wilderness of despair you have faithfully provided for our daily needs. Yet we humbly confess that when things don't go exactly our way, we feel you have deserted us. Forgive our faithlessness, O God, and help us to realize that it is we who so often have deserted you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. will hear these words of assurance. If we confess our sins, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Thanks be to God. Amen. So we're setting a a time aside now for you to share your reflections or your testimony. So feel free to stand where you are and to come forward if you'd like to have the uh, mic so you can be heard. Paula, I'd like to come forward. Hmm? Oh, yes, we'll come forward and then who else is coming? Mm -hmm. Um, Today's message really spoke to me um, about when I really felt God's presence in my life and as Paula had mentioned um, in her sermon that, you know, not all homes have um, good things going on in them. And I grew up in one of those homes. Um, There was abusive things that were happening and um, I would go to bed every night and I would pray and pray and pray and pray that something different would happen, that, you know, my parents would separate, um, that, you know, I couldn't wait to go to college to get out of that situation. And um, finally, when I was away at college and divorce was happening, um, I would just find myself sitting and talking to God in our um, um, bre- little brethren chapel that we had on campus. And um, I felt that I wanted to give back for him listening and in hearing my prayers and that's when I really started into the music ministry because I wanted to give um, everything that I have for him and you know in the words of uh, the song we just sang great are you Lord you know it says you give life you are love you bring light to the darkness and I really felt that he brought the light to my darkness Um, he gave me hope 
to help restore my heart that was broken. And um, I just, I've had this on my heart for a long time that I wanted to give my testimony and how God has reached out his hand to me and helped me through some very, very difficult times. And I'm, I'm here, I'm standing before you and um, I have given my life to God and um, it, just, it just means so much to me to be able to, to share that with you. So thank you for listening. Well, this is a little bit about my spiritual journey. Uh, I grew up in the Catholic Church. I, pr I went to church probably till I was went away to college. And then I sort of drifted apart from God. And I guess part of it was I was doing fine. You know, my life was going okay. Uh, maybe I was thinking I didn't need God. Uh, Things started to change. Uh, we started to go back to, Irene and I started to go back to church when our first son was going to be born. And we wanted to have some place to baptize him. And w one, one day, uh, Irene had invited our pastor over and their renewal had begun in our church. And our pastor came over and I don't know that I remember this well. My memory's not that great. But uh, I, I, I sense that he asked, I was there, and he asked, you know, do you want to give your life to Christ? And I guess my thought was, well, I, I guess I have nothing better to do. So why not? You know, I have nothing to lose. So I, I did that. And I, I think I started to grow spiritually. Part of it was the church we are in. Uh, but then I think I hit a plateau. And you know, I don't know that I was, I mean, I was all right, <laughs> but I don't know that I was, I was growing like maybe I should have been. Uh, and and I've, I guess I've asked myself over the years, what, what does God want me to be doing? You know, how am I supposed to relate to God? And it's difficult for me, I guess, in a way to relate to God as God. I mean, I don't know that I sense him as a person. And so I was thinking, well, what, what else should I be doing? And I, I guess uh, the, the thing that spurred me on recently was a, a sermon that Pastor Jennifer gave on love. So I went home, got out my Bible, to uh, 1 Corinthians 13, verses 4 through 7, about love. And I, I went to the Amplified Bible, and I also listened to a couple sermons on YouTube on, on those verses. And since that time, every day, that's what I've been doing, is praying about and meditating on those verses. And I guess my take on what I need to be doing as a Christian is to love my neighbor. And that's uh, to be a sheep rather than a goat. Uh, and I, that's, I, I think, has really helped me. You know, I, I think I still obviously fall short but uh, uh, at times but but I uh, you know keep praying uh, another thing is for the Holy Spirit to work through me rather than me to work through myself and all, those sort of tie together and I think that's uh, I, I feel better about my spiritual journey now uh, than I did for many years so thank you Amen. Thank you. And um, 
it, it is just a blessing to be in the community of faith and we, you know, in a safe and healing place and we can share with one another. So uh, thanks be to God. Amen. 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 And so we're going to, we are now going to have Holy Communion. And here's the invitation. The God who made heaven and earth has created us in God's glorious image. And remember, that's the image of God and wisdom, right? Come to God's banquet table and partake of God's self. Remember the blessings we have received and the blessings we are called to be. <laughs> Come to be blessed. Come to be fed. Come for the Spirit is calling, inviting us to be nourished and born anew. So gracious God, we ask you to bless the bread in our cups today, we, that we may be strengthened through your Holy Spirit to be the body of Christ, your servant people, faithful in all things and humble in your service to you and your people. Amen. Amen. Will those who are going to serve communion please come forward. In peace, let us pray. 
Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us, to grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your spirit to give ourselves to others. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. amen. Please stand as you're able. The closing song is Awesome God. up the seas he's putting on the reds our god is an awesome god there is thunder in his foot and lightning in his fist our god is an awesome god then the lord wasn't joking when he kicked him out of eden it wasn't for no reason that he shed his blood return is very close better be believing god is an awesome god our god is an awesome god he Starless in the void of the night Our God, God is an awesome God Spoke into the darkness and created the light Our God is an awesome God And judgment and wrath he poured out on Sodom Mercy and grace he gave us at the cross Hope we're not too quickly forgotten God is an awesome God your assurance that God will walk with you. Let this be your resolve that you will walk with God and the blessing of the mother and God, the son and the Holy Spirit go with you. Amen and amen. Our God is an awesome God.